Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 22nd of November 2019 and the time has just gone 10.25 GMT. And I'm looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 25th until Friday the 29th of November. Uh, so before we look at, we discuss the events of next week and what we could, what we could be looking out for, uh, let's just have a quick look at what's gone on so far. Um, the US-China trade saga has been very much at the forefront of traders' minds this week. Uh, we've heard a lot of um, sound bites and a lot of comments and a lot of reports. We haven't heard a whole lot of absolute concrete evidence. There's a lot of, a lot of things still up in the air and particularly in the last 24 hours, 48 hours, we've heard of some kind of conflicting bits of news and information. Um, so, so the kind of result of that was a trader felt Based, broadly speaking, a bit uneasy, and there's been a kind of a, a lack of um, real kind of firm direction being taken. Uh, broadly speaking, we've lost a bit of ground on, uh, on global equity markets, but then again, if traders were genuinely absolutely terrified that, that all the, the, the progress in, has, has, is going to come undone, equity markets would be a lot lower. Conversely, if they were absolutely confident that they would be struck in a few weeks, they would probably be higher. But we've heard various different things like um, there's a possibility the US-China trade deal will not be signed uh, in 2019, it'll be signed in 2020. There's a possibility um, that President Trump could look to hike um, tariffs even higher if a deal isn't reached uh, within the next month. Um, we've heard from the Chinese Premier who basically said that once you, have a tr once you carry out talks and, and, and uh, carry out and c continue the mutual respect, um, but Xi Jinping also made it clear that he didn't, China didn't start the trade war, the US did. Uh, there's also reports that the Vice Premier of, of, of China has invited Robert Leitziger and Steve Mnuchin for talks. So th it's a bit of a mixed picture I and mean, all the kind of toing and froing. That's why we've seen the kind of equity markets swing around. But by and large, the, the move of the last few days has been to the, to the downside. Um, but like I said, if things are, if traders were absolutely terrified that the all the trade talks were going to come undone, we would actually be, be, be somewhere else. It is also worth pointing out, according to Steve Mnuchin, US Treasury Secretary, that back in June, um, they were about 90% of the way there in terms of trade. So things, you can't have a lot of progress and then things can all come undone as well. So traders have really kind of lost sight of that. Um, looking at close to home, what's going on here in the UK in relation to uh, the UK economy and the, and the British pound and politics, the general election and the polls of, of, of the general election are very, very much in play as far as the, uh, the British power is concerned. Um, essentially, every poll I've seen um, has put the Conservative Party um, uh, comfortably in the, in the lead. Um, on top of that, during the week we heard from uh, Boris Johnson, who said that all of the Tory candidates that are standing in next month's general election all support the deal that he brokered with the European Union. So, you know, the, the view there is if the Tories get, get, a, get a majority, and those particular uh, prospective MPs were true to the word, the, the idea should be that they would all back uh, Boris Johnson's deal. Um, obviously, there's this major political uncertainty of, of uh, there's political uncertainty of what can go on. If 2016 has thought of anything, is that you can't really absolutely kind of be, be, um, be rely too much on, on opinion polls. But nonetheless, the gains that have been made in the British pound. Uh, in the last couple of months, have been largely he held on to on, on, the, uh, on, on that basis. Uh, also, during the week, what we heard from uh, the Fed Reserve, the, we heard the, the Fed minutes. Um, it was this, this was the update from the meeting in at the end of October, where the Fed cut rates for the third time in a, in a number of months. And it seemed fairly clear that the most of the policymakers in the US are content um, with the, that the the rates that cuts that they've introduced so far should be enough to support jobs, the economy, growth, um, and, and, and inflation. And so th it would appear that the U.S. economy is in, fairly good, is, in, is in fairly good shape, and it would appear that U.S. policymakers don't want to move uh, any, uh, want, to put, want to move in rates in the near term, at least. Obviously, they've got a caveat of it, depending on, you know, data dependent and all that, but it looks reasonably confident that they're not going to be uh, altering rates in the near term. Um, having, uh, having a look at the major events of next week, uh, we have the German IFO business climate. This is going to be of a, a, a fairly, fairly, important, fairly important significance, given that um, the Chinese, the, the, given that the German economy is the largest economy in, in Europe, uh, the German economy narrowly dodged a, a technical recession 
um, manufacturing and services in in in, uh, in, um, in Germany are partic are particularly strong. So any kind of sign of how any kind of indication of how business climate is doing is going to be you know very valuable for traders' insight because Germany's been kind of caught in the crossfire of well not only Brexit uncertainty but also the U.S.-China trade story. Uh, next week uh, we have in terms of corporate stories. We have updates from we have third quarter numbers from Dick's Sporting Goods over in the U.S. Uh, I, I, it's a retailer. It gives a flavour of um, of how the retail appetite is. The company at its most recent update had fairly positive um, se had fairly positive second quarter figures, uh, and they managed to actually raise their, their full year forecast. So there are some positive stories out there as far as U U.S. retail is concerned. Uh, on on we we have uh, full year numbers from Tops Tiles. Here in the UK uh, on, on the same day on the uh, on Tuesday next week, we also have full year numbers of our Marstons, the uh, the pub crowd, um, the pub group here in the UK. But probably one of the kind of more important economic indicators next week from the uh, will be the US third quarter GDP and the piece and the core PCE reading. Now keep in mind in relation to um, in relation to growth, uh, the US economy. Grew by 3.1% in the first quarter. It grew by 2% in the second quarter. So it's in fairly good shape, but obviously it's a, it's a decline in growth of quarter and quarter. So any kind of signs that the US economy is leveling off in growth, or if the, the the sign is that the US economy is going to continue on at the kind of deceleration rate, that could kind of bring to the uh, bring up the old uh, idea that what are the Fed going to do next? But keep in mind, the Fed cut rates in September, the cut rates in, uh, in October. So the possibility that, that those interest rate cuts have really kind of trickled down to the U.S. economy. Um, I think towards the back end of the next week, we have uh, inflation figures out of the Eurozone. This gives an indication of how demand is panning out in the Eurozone. And we already know that, it, that it's, that's it, that it's uh, pretty weak. Um, that's why the European Central Bank have uh, restarted their government bond buying scheme as a, as a way of kind of reinvigorating some sort of growth in, in, in the area. Uh, we also have Canadian uh, third quarter numbers coming out at the back end of next week. Now, it's quite remarkable that the, uh, quite impressive, that the Bank of Canada have kept interest rates on hold for over a year now, given what their southern neighbour has done, and given what the likes of Australia, New Zealand, and the European Central Bank have all done. Uh, so, any kind of signs of weakness that the Canadian economy is cooling down, they could be next potentially in the far line for cutting interest rates, just because. If everyone else around you cuts rates, that kind of makes your currency relatively more expensive, which can damage exports, which can lead to a slowdown in the economy. And uh, on Saturday the 30th of, of November, um, which obviously be the weekend, we have the official uh, Chinese figures, manufacturing and non-manufacturing numbers coming out. I'll take a look now at some of the, uh, the major markets and see how things are looking, starting off with the FTSE 100. So the broad... Kind of move for the last say, about six seven weeks on the Fortune 100 has been to the upside. Granted, I know we had a fairly sizable sizable pullback between early November and into mid November, we we're trading fairly much on the 30 moving average. This red line along here, and so the broader move for the last few weeks has been to the upside. If we can hold above this area here, 7,200, and, and if we can retake and have a sizable break, break above the. the Security moving average, we could be looking at retesting 7,400. If we go beyond that, we could be looking at it towards this zone here, around 7,470 down to 7,440. So that there, there are potential areas of resistance if they get a wider upper trend continues. Taking a look uh, is what is going on over in Germany. So the big picture is that the German market has been kind of performing well. Uh, particularly for 2019, but particularly in the last few months, and not only recently do we, do we see levels last seen uh, in January in January uh, 2017. Sorry, apologies, uh, January 2018 rather. Uh, so we're talking um, quite a quite a impressive impressive uh, levels seen on the DAX not too long ago. So we're talking about you know 22 month highs. So I give indication of how bullish things are on the DAX. Granted, we've kind of pulled back a bit recently. I talked about traders are a bit uncertain about the next leg of the US-China trade war. But the wider trend does continue. We could be looking at uh, retesting this area here in around 13,600, which is obviously a fair, few, a fair bit away. But you know that could be the potential near-term target, medium-term medium -term target, rather. Uh, if the kind of more recent um, downward, downward move that we've had in the last week or so, 10 days, does manage to continue, 
we could be looking heading back down towards 13,000 or this area here in around 12,980. I take a look at what's going on with the uh, S&P 500. So if you can remember, the, the FTSE was broadly moving higher for the last five or six weeks, but the FTSE 100 is nowhere near as strong as the DAX, and the DAX is nowhere near as strong as the S&P 500. Now the S&P 500, only, um, only a short while ago, was at all-time highs. It cooled ever so slightly from those all-time highs. So giving it really kind of sums up how strong U.S. markets are, even though that, that they're in the middle of a trade war with China, they're still um, just not, not a million miles away from record highs. So the, so the S&P 500 is a very much in the support trend. If you continue to push it higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent highs uh, in around kind of 31, 32, 33, in around which you saw not too long ago, only during the week. And if you're going to press on beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 31, 20, 30, so on and so forth. Uh, if you do see any move, moves to the downside, we could pull back to this zone here in around 30.66 or potentially uh, 30.25. And lastly, you take a look at the British pound versus the US dollar. I talked about how the, because the, the Conservatives are doing well in the opinion polls and it would appear that the, the candidates running uh, in the Conservative Party are going to back Boris should he, should he get a majority. We've seen We've seen a bit of kind of sideways trading of it uh, on, the, on the British pound versus the US dollar. So we're, we're you know we've held pretty much nearly all the gains that were made since early September. Um, and if you do look to kind of push it higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the recent high in at one spot 30 2012. And a move beyond that could take us up towards uh, one spot 31 78. But if you do move to the downside, we could, could balance this both in this zone here in, in around one spot 28. Or maybe one spot 27.68, and potentially even from the 200 moving average here in at one spot 27.04. I would suggest that it's only really if we start to see, say, the Labour Party make inroads in, into the uh, Conservative lead in the opinion polls, because then we can get to see uh, kind of a move to the downside in the British pound. And you know, if, as as uh, fairly strong as the pound is, I also foresee it. So it, it um it getting some difficulty trying to kind of have a decent break north of the, the recent high just because you know opinion polls as you saw in 2016 um don't always give a perfect a perfect view so i think we could see limited upside in, in the british pound uh but at, but at the same time we really want to see uh, the conservative majority taper off before we can actually get worried thinking uh we're actually going to look for, for, for head towards a potential possibility of a labor government uh, that is all for me this week. Uh, thank you for listening and tune in next week. Thank you.